So we would like now to invite Dr. Kazuto Shimori to the stage. Okay, thank you very much for oh, oh, giving me this prestigious award. Let's start. Protein is a linear polypeptide when synthesized according to the central dogma. However, protein must be folded and assembled to fulfill its function as assigned by genetic code. But for example, growth hormone receptor must have this beautiful structure to bind to growth hormone. Our field has one more dogma called Anfinzen's dogma. Dr. Anfinzen did a simple experiment, uh, in vitro experiment, and showed that protein is folded spontaneously based on its primary amino acid sequence with no energy required. So, because he received Nobel Prize in 1972, it, at that time, it, protein folding is thought to be a very easy process. But this is an experiment in vitro. Then scientists to focus on the protein folding in the cell. 70% of the material in the cell are water, so protein must work in this aqueous environment. 20 amino acids consisting protein is characterized into two categories. One is polar hydrophilic amino acid, and the other is non-polar hydrophobic amino acid. Then, to work in a aqueous environment, hydrophobic amino acids go in inside of the molecule, and then hydrophilic amino acids go located, should be located outside of the molecule. However, this spontaneous folding protein folding in the cell is quite difficult due to so-called molecular crowding. Protein concentration in the cell is extremely high. For example, people said in coli, 200 milligram per milliliter. In that situation, stretch of hydrophobic amino is quite sticky. They, before they go inside of the molecule, they make inappropriate interaction uh, then they can be misfolded or even aggregated. So if cell is a, a, not in good condition for protein folding, then scientists do look for the why we can solve this problem. Then find all, all cells are essentially equipped with a special type of proteins called molecular chaperones. Chaperone binds to this state stretch of hydrophobic amino acid to prevent inappropriate interaction. Then this chaperone uh, dissociated from substrate and the substrate uh, folded according to the central dogma. In more detail, HSP70 type e molecular chaperone in the endoplasmic reticulum is called BIP. This type of chaperone contains two domains. One is nucleotide binding domain, the other is a substrate binding domain. If ATP is in the nucleotide binding domain, substrate binding domain is open. Then this binds to the hydrophobic stretch exposed in the uh, newly synthesized proteins. Then, but this binding is uh, quite loose, loose binding. After that, co-chaperone comes in to stimulate this ATPS activity of HSP70 type chaperone to uh, change ATP to ADP. Then the substrate binding it becomes closed. So this grabs the uh, substrate to uh, block inappropriate interactions. Then nucleotide exchange factor comes in to exchange ADP to ATP. Then this uh, substrate binding domain become open and release substrate. The substrate become folded according to the Anfinzen the, the Anfinzen's dogma. If still unfolded protein uh, are exposed on the surface, this bind, grab, release, spontaneous folding, this cycle continues 
until uh, this uh, four pro uh, hydrophobic stage go inside of the molecules. Uh, secretory protein like a growth hormone and a transmembrane protein in uh, like a growth hormone receptor are synthesized at ER membrane ribosome. Then ER contains number of molecular chaperones and folding enzyme that assist this productive folding of these molecules. Then only correctly followed molecules are allowed to move along to the, uh, their final destinations. However, because cell synthesize a large amount of proteins, some are still unfolded or misfolded even after assistance of molecular chaperones. These are later translated back to the cytosol to be degraded by ubiquitin proteasome system. This system is called ER associated degradation, ER. So quality control system operates in the ER by two distinct mechanisms. One is chaperone mediated productive folding, and the other is ER associated degradation. However, under a variety of physiological and pathological conditions, correctly uh, termed ER stress, this qu quality control system, the ER, is compromised, resulting in the accumulation of unfolded or misfolded protein in the ER. This is a prob problematic to the cell because only correct folded molecules ar move along to the security pathway. If ER stress condition prolongs, cells suffer from shortage of necessary proteins at their destination. For example, large, small and large intestinal cells express lysozyme and antibacterial proteins. Then they, this can kill the bacteria. But uh, if quality control system, this organ is uh, disrupted, there is no expression of lysosome, almost no expression of lysosome. Then the cell loses the ability to kill bacteria. The oral infection of gram positive uh, bacteria, uh, and uh, after oral infection, this gram positive bacteria in, uh, grows 100 times more. That may cause inflammatory bowel diseases. Also, usually hydrophobic stretch are uh, uh, located inside the molecule, but pro if protein is unfolded or misfolded, hydrophobic stretch is exposed again on the surface that make in appropriate interaction with other protein to uh, cause proteotoxicity. For example, pancreatic beta cells uh, shown green uh, usually synthesize and secrete large amount of insulin. But if quality control system in, in pancreas is disrupted, misfolded insulin uh, uh, go, uh, show that exhibit proteotoxicity, then beta cells undergo apoptosis, so they cannot synthesize uh, insulin, then the mouse developed diabetes mellitus. So, question is, these, uh, can cell cope with this problematic ER, ER stress? Answer is yes. My bosses at Texas, Joe Sandbrook and Major Gasing showed in 1988 that when unfold proteins are accumulated in the ER, this ER cell signal is transmitted to the nucleus to induce ER localized molecular chaperones to augment uh, product folding activity in the ER. Induced chaperone can uh, defold this unfold protein in the ER. So essentially, all eukaryotic cells are equipped with this homeostatic response we call unfold protein response. At that time, uh, induction of chaperone was shown, but 10 years later, Components of ER associated degradation to detect and then deliver misfold protein to the cytosol also induced uh, to enhance degradation capacities. This pro prototype of UPRs were known 10 years before, but no mechanism was shown. So, 
Oh, uh, later, at the end of my talk, I uh, talk on the uh, product holding versus e -learned. Because no uh, mechanical insight was revealed in mammalian system, uh, both decided to switch system from mammalian cells to e cells, which, was, which turned out to be a great decision. I became a postdoc of the lab in 19, uh, April in 1989. So it was very fortunate I could be involved, be involved in the analysis of UPR from beginning. System exists, but no molecule uh, had, was identified. Because this is a transcriptional induction system, I first analyzed uh, cis-acting promoter element that identified uh, unfold protein response element. Usually, next step is a uh, identification of transcription factor capable of binding to this UPRE. The usually people do purification of proteins. However, I was a biochemist or I was a graduate student and assistant professor. I had experience of protein purification many, many times. I, I didn't like uh, but, uh, that one because I have to stay on the, uh, in the cold room for a long time. So it's a very painful experiment. So then I did not want to repeat the same experiment in the United States. So I want to do something new. And then decide to challenge yeast genetics. Yeast, wild type yeast cells uh, can do a, a transmit a signal when unfold proteins accumulate in the ear. But so we look for the mutant, which cannot induce chaperones even in the presence of unfold protein in the ear. Measurement of uh, chaperone level uh, by Western blood is very laborious. So I hooked up with this unfold protein response element to E. coli beta galaxidase, then put it in the E cells. If, uh, Yeast cells are grown in a plate containing exigel with no color. Uh, yeast shows white colonies. The after addition of ER stress, uh, ER both ER chaperone and beta galaxidase are induced. That creates exigel to produce blue color X. So the colony turned blue. Because, but after addition of ER stress, cell eventually die. So I made a replica plate. Then after random mutagenesis of yeast genome, if yeast has a mutation in the UPR signaling, some remain white. So the, uh, it's, a kind, it's a simple blue-white selection. White type cell turned blue and UPR mutant do not turn blue. Question is how many colonies should be screened? But I, success of my, this uh, screening changed my life. I may be keep, keep working on this uh, research field. So I decided to work uh, hard as much as possible and I uh, decided to screen 100,000 colonies. Uh, the using, making a 1,000 plate. But it took a, a half year, but I cloned three UPR mutants. They do not turn blue. Then next thing was they put a genomic library to into this UPR mutant to find what kind of genes uh, mutated in this mutant. Then again, it took ha another half year. Then I got IR one gene called IR one. It turned out one IR E one gene uh, was uh, mutated all three mutants. That means I got one gene from 100,000 colonies. The sequencing IR1 gene shown that it's a transmembrane protein with protein kinase domain at, uh, located at the cytosolic site. Looks like it functions as a ER stress sensor. In the Y type cells, this various ER chaperones are nicely induced, but in the uh, absence of this sensor, no, actually no induction was observed as we expected. So we, I demonstrated that this function as an ER stress sensor, but surprisingly, Peter Walter at UCSF uh, did a ex, uh, similar 
genetic screening identified same molecule called IRE1. So now uh, two papers published in 1993 uh, are considered to open up a new field called unfollow-potent response or ER stress response. After publication of IRE1, I went, came back to Japan to find a position at Heat Shock Research Protein Institute, directed by Dr. Euler. Next target is a, a UPR specific transcription factor. I struggled for a while, maybe it took two years to get this factor, but I came up with the idea of a hybrid screening, then got HACWAM basic leucine zipper type transcription factor. Surprisingly again, Peter Walter did uh, another different screen called multi-copy suppress screening. He got uh, I HACRAM, same molecule, HACRAM. And the, this screen works faster than uh, this one. Then he showed that IRE and HACRAM is connected uh, in an unusual mechanism. HACRAM mRNA is spliced uh, upon ER stress, and then that after splicing, this transcription factor is produced. It's published in uh, Cell in 1996, then that was a big shock. But uh, I realized that we see same splicing reactions, but we have different interpretation. How, why this uh, factor is produced only after ER stress? So we, uh, again, we struggled, I struggled for another one year, then, then show that my interpretation was right. Intron removed by splicing has ability to block translation. That's why this mRNA is not translated. But after splicing mediated removal of this intron, this mature mRNA is efficiently translated to produce a HACRAM protein. Then uh, after splicing reaction, c region is switched from 10A to 18A. Then 18A work function as a transcriptional activation domain. So uh, after splicing, DNA bank domain and transcription activation is fused to produce highly active transcription factor. Peter Walter is a great scientist. He showed that IRE1 itself cleavage, cleaves this HACON mRNA, and he showed that TRN ligase was used to uh, uh, connect uh, two fragments. So by competition between two groups, this move, field moved dramatically forward. And we, we shared many uh, international awards. I, I asked to, to write a review how young scientists like me compete as a big guy with Peter Walter uh, that may be interesting to young people. So East has IRE1. Then Randy Kaufman and David Rohn cloned mammalian IRE1. Then it turned out that essentially all eukaryotic cells express IRE1 as an ER source sensor. The, David Long is a smart guy, and he cloned the second UPR sensor called PERC. This is, IR1 is supposed to induce transcription of chaperones, but activated PERC uh, tra attenuated translation by in, uh, phosphorylating alpha summit of eukaryotic initial factor 2. So, uh, if, when ER stress occurs, this uh, quality control is compromised. If protein was kept synthesized, ER have more protein, more problems. So by activating a PERC mediated translation attenuation, cell can decrease the burden to the ER. So yeast does not have PERC, and the only metazoan cell express PERC. So we have a couple of changes in the UPR system during evolution. First changes, uh, uh, acquisition of AT, uh, PERC, to tra block translation. We, we don't, we, we, I didn't have enough hands, so we don't focus on the sensors. We focus, our institute focus on transcription of it. Then, but I, I read many papers in the, uh, published in the uh, 
in the field, but I saw that DR6 acting element is not discovered yet for uh, more than 20 years. So I asked a uh, young, young scientist in the institute, Hideo Yoshida, he's in the audience here, and he asked him to uh, find a DR6 acting element, which can be which can explain the simultaneous induction of all ER chaperones. So he was smart enough to identify ER stress response element. Uh, it consisting of CCAT, nine base space here, uh, and CCACG. This barpite structure confused all students, all scientists, except Hidero. Then, this uh, identification of this cis-acting uh, element called make the breakthrough. Then we, because one hybrid screen I used to clone HAC1 is a modified version of two hybrid screen that can be applied to any other species. So Hidero used one hybrid screen to identify ERC binding protein. And he identified AT6 and XBP1. The most important uh, uh, transcription factor in uh, mammalian UPO. Peter Walter used this sc screening, but this can be applied only in ease. He, so he cannot move on to mammalian UPO. This, this is a real turning point. I'll talk on this on more on tomorrow's symposium. So AT6 is an interesting molecule. It's a hac one like base glucine zipper type transcription factor, but it contains hydrophobic stretch immediately C terminal to the uh, uh, base glucine region that anchor this protein in the EO. So AT6 is synthesized as a 90 kilodalton protein constitutively. After year cells, this 90 kilodalton decreased, and instead, uh, 50 dalton protein appears. This is quite faint, but additional proteasome inhibitor show that quite a quantitative conversion of uh, 90 kilodalton to 50 kilodalton. Then, uh, this 50 kilodalton protein is a soluble protein, so liberated from the membrane, that, and then enter the nucleus to activate transcription. AT6, the second membrane bound transcription factor identified in history. First one is SRBP, identified and extensively characterized by Brown Goshen Nobel laureates. Then they sh uh, show that two proteas uh, involved in the cleavage to uh, this SRBP. Then they show that the same enzyme cleaves AT6 too. So, surprisingly, so. Activation stimulus is different. Cholesterol depletion for SRBP and ERS so AT6 by shared activation mechanisms. That explains why these factors are not cleaved under normal conditions. This substrate uh, transcription factor localized in the ear, but proteins are localized in the Golgi. Then when cholesterol is depleted, uh, uh, SRBP move to the Golgi via coptic vesicle. They meet proteas and get cleavage to activate transcription. Same thing happen. ERT6 local in the ER and then uh, move on to the Golgi upon ERSS get to meet proteases. Question is still uh, local st there. How about carb proteins? But we found that misfold calc protein is retained in the ER, but only AT6 is selected to uh, move on to the COP2 basically to go to the Golgi. All mechanisms of the SEPP transport is solved, but we have no answer how AT6 uh, selected, uh, is escorted the Golgi. This is a very mysterious process for more than 20 years. So, AT6 functions as a third ER stress sensor. Many laboratories look for the transfusion factor downstream of mammalian IR1, but nobody had success. But Hidero, XBP1, Hidero identified by one hybrid screen 
was、uh, turned out to be a functional molecule, functional homologue of yeast HAC1. Its primary structure is different, but the regulation is quite similar. Its splicing is regulated, but intron was only 26 nucleotides, so it was very difficult to identify this splicing reaction by northern blood. But after splicing, C terminal region is replaced to、uh, fuse DNA binding domain to transcription activation domain to produce highly active transcription factor, in similar to the case of East HAC1. The same year, in 2001, Harvard group showed that XBP1 is required for the differentiation of B cell to plasma cell, which synthesizes secrete extremely large amount of immunoglobulins. So,、uh, this shows that、uh, mechanism and physiological importance of UPR at the same time, same year. So, after identification of mediators,、uh, scientists started to construct an, an another knockout mice. Big surprise came to the field. Knockout of mammalian IRU has no effect on the induction of chaperones. So, we saw that eight of six we identified. It, it plays a role because ectopic accretion of this、uh, cytosplasmic region is sufficient to induce red marked BRS ER chaperones. So, we want to show this is required to my making knockout mice. But Harvard Group published a paper in 2003 the knockdown of ATO6 is consists of alpha, beta, double knockdown has no effect of induction chaperones. This is, they claim the third factor may, might, must exist. The, this result confused our field. But then I was very so frustrated. But this is a negative result of knockdown. So we, it's not conclusive. So we kept working on the, uh, uh, constructing、uh, knockout mice. Dr. Harada at the Gunma University, now at the Osaka University, helped us to make knockout mice. And we had MEF cells deficient in the ATS alpha and ATS beta. Then,、uh, when white type cells, chaperone is nicely induced after ER stress, but a knockout cell, the, this induction was greatly mitigated. Show that it is alpha in the major regulator of ER chaperone in mice. In, in contrast, knockout H beta had almost no effect, but we consider that H beta is a backup molecule、uh, working on this weak induction because H is no single knock, alpha single knockout, beta single knockout has no phenotype, but alpha beta double knockout cause embryonic lethality. So,、uh, this deep、uh, knockout of ATS function uh, uh, has a very bad effect on the mass development. ATS6 exists in a、uh, metazan cell, but in C. elegans and Drosophila melanogasta, IRE1 plays a role in, major role in ER chaperone induction. But in mice, ATS6 plays a role. There is a switch from IR1 to ATO6 during evolution. So, this slide summarizes no, phenotype of knockout mice.、Uh, Harvard group showed that knockout of IR1 XVP1 caused embryonic lethality, caused poor development to liver. Liver synthesis c r e t e large amount of protein circulating in the blood. Also, liver is responsible for the hematopoiesis during the developmental days. So, mice with poor developed liver suffer from anemia and dies. If、uh, XVP1 is introduced back to the liver only using up E promoter, little bit smaller mice can be born, but they die soon because next problem occurs in the pancreas. Pancreas cannot secrete large amount of digestive enzyme. So milk, milk cannot be digested. They die because no nutrient. Then, so these secretory organs suffer from the knockout of this IR and XBPN pathways. Park knockout mice showed diabetes. So 
、インスリンズ、スモールモレキュー。If it's misfolded, induction of シャープロン is not efficient way. シャープロン is much bigger than insulin. The、uh, stop translation is more efficient. Park m e t h o d if insulin become misfolded, Park m e t h o d attenuation block translation. So,、uh, awaiting for the defolding by existing chaperones. Then, if protein becomes defolded, Park is activated, not, not inactivated, to again start the synthesis of insulin. So, breakwork is important for、uh, Park beta, pancreatic beta cells. After finding this、uh, correlation with diabetes, Many medical doctors get interested in this system. And、uh, many diseases are、uh, reported to be associated with ERSS or a n f o l p o t e n t response. Again, I show that it is alpha beta, uh, uh, double knockout cause embryonic recite very,、uh, very early days. So this is the most important branch of the UPR in mammals. Because we could not find any.、Uh, Perhaps even at 8.5, we could not figure out which organ is affected by the deletion of ATL6. So we, need, we thought we need to switch model organisms. But in C. elegans and Drosophila, ATL6 has an almost no function in the UPL. We cannot use these、uh, model organisms. We thought uh, uh, that. Uh, this switch from IRN to a t s occurs with the developed and the vertebral because genome projects show that、uh, genome of this non vertebrate contain this gene set, one RE1, one PERC, and one a t l 6 but t e r e o s genome contains two IRE1, one PERC, and two a t l 6 So we decided to work on fish. But here we wanted to reverse genetics, not to forward genetics. So, to, we wanted to knock out ATS alpha and beta to see what happened. To do that, we need a genome project to be finished. Genome size of Medaka is half of the genome size of zebrafish, and we have a history of 100 years in the Medaka research that we have an inbred strain. To, to these character、uh, features,、uh, Japanese scientists Completed the genome project in 2007, just when we wanted to work on fish. So we chose Medaka fish. You are not familiar with Medaka fish, but various molecular biological techniques are available and m o l e c u l a r mediated RNA, RNA knockdown,、um, mRNA injection mediated to overexcession is possible. Then we can observe all the developmental stage under microscope. And then、uh, mouse become pregnant every two or three months, but Medaka lay eggs every day. So we can do experience as much as we want. <laughs> and then we want to use the system to find what is the physiological ERS. And we found collagen, most abundant protein in the, our body, is key molecule. We identified a c s knockout,、uh, beta knockout, a t o 6 is activated by cleavage here. Then we found that a t s knockout shows、uh, no induction of chaperones as in mice. And、uh, we find uh, uh, alpha knockout, single knockout, beta single knockout have no phenotype, but double knockout cause e m b r y o n i c lethality as in mice,、uh, as we expected. And、because genome project finished, we can obtain any genomic fragment. This fragment contains c h a p e r o n BIP and its upstream region. So, if first exon of BIP is replaced with EGFP, EGFP becomes under the control of c h a p e r o n promoter. Then make a transgenic line. c h a p e r o n works、uh, entire body, so entire body is turned green, especially more green in the liver and the gut. The addition of tunic lysine makes、uh, green brighter. So, we, this is a nice、uh, ERSS reporter. Then, using this reporter, we looked at the, uh, all the developer stage, and the three places especially become turned green brain, otic vesicle, and notochord. But neural tube next to the notochord is not brightened. So we thought it be not a signaling molecule. Structural protein may be a cause of 
year stress. The after searching that, we found that knockdown of type 8 collagen greatly mitigate the ER stress in a not code. Collagen has a triple helix, simple structure, but papers in 90 show that many various ER chaperones can help folding of collagen. Then so we checked not code in the double knockout. Brachiary is a marker for not code, and in the white fish, it reach uh, until the tip of the tail, and the disc like not code cells are organized very well. But in double knockout, brachiary stopped the middle of the tail and the structure of no alignment of uh, this like cells is very disorganized. That caused the, the severe ERSS and IRE and PASE, uh, PASE is uh, activated, but this cannot rescue this uh, phenotype. The measured bears level of ER chaperones, and most of them are down regulated. So I inject, we injected chaperone mRNA to transiently overexpress chaperones, and then find that. Even sh still short tail is short, but gradually reach the tip of the tail, and the organization is a little bit distorted. So, in first, uh, this ATS double cut has no mutation in the chaperone gene. Chaperone is expressed at the basal level, but it, this is not enough for the, this uh, developmental stages. ER chaperone function is essential from yeast to mice, but we think ER chaperone levels must be adjusted according to the need in the ER. Third change uh, during evolution is the number of ATS like transcription factor, two in non vertebrate, five in uh, vertebrate fish. Why we need so many sensors? If ERSS means, simply means accumulation of unfolded, misfolded proteins. We check the localization. It is alpha and beta is ubiquitously expressed. Luma is also ubiquitously expressed, but Crave H is expressed only in the liver and gut, as in mice. Dr. Hira Imaizumi at Hiroshima University showed that Oasis is uh, involved in the bone formation and it's expressed in the bone tissue in fish. Then we, uh, we next all of this, and the interest results came with this BBF2H7. Dr. Imaizumi showed that BBF2H7 knockout mice uh, has short with poor development blue cartilage. They, uh, because chest cavity cannot form very well, the mice die immediately after birth. Beef to knockout fish uh, also short, and we went to go back to all the developmental stage to see where this uh, phenotype shows up. Because this fish has a 86 alpha and beta, smooth alignment of not called cells are normal. But uh, during the next step, bacterialization, this knockout fish showed bending of the neocotocode. Not code is formed from dorsal organizer by uh, after receiving TGF beta signaling. The not code synthesis assigns secrete hedgehog to uh, regulate the patterning of various tissues. Then after that, not code cells is differentiated into two types of cells: big, large bacterial um, cells and short, thin, uh, non bacterial cells. Bacchial, uh, plays a role because this is filled with water and make a tug of pressure to the notochord. Then, cell, if, when cell received jagnot signaling, they become this thin cells. Because notochords are primitive form of cartilage, they started synthesizing type 2 collagens. Then, if type 2 collagen is secreted, that forms basement membrane that cover not called as a seed. Uh, so this cell called seed cells. So, immunostaining show that 
the, uh, type 2 collagen is synthesized during this vacuolization. You see vacuole here. Then uh, type 2 collagen is secreted. This short form cease to cover notochord. So see, notochord can develop, go st straight forward, forward. But in knockout, cell uh, synthesize type 2 collagen, but remain punctate. The basement membrane cannot cover the notochord. The goals of the uh, target pressure during the vacuolization, uh, notochord makes bending and stop growing. So type, during this process, type 8 collagen matters, and this process, type 2 collagen matters. What's the difference between type 8 and type 2? Type 2 is a, has 15 amino acids, 1,500 amino acids, and they contain glycine XY repeat 360 times with no gap. So this uh, forms a ro ro uh, tight rod-like structures to cover uh, a cell as an extracellular matrix. But uh, in type 8 collagen, there are uh, uh, type 2, type 8 collagen is a short collagen molecule, uh, about 700 amino acids. In addition, they have two amino acid break in the middle of uh, repeats. That, due to this break, we think that type 8 collagen can go to compact structure. So in, during smooth alignment, it is mediate induction, chaperones is, is uh, successful, then this type 8 collagen can be folded into compact structure and uh, then uh, accommodate in the normal COP2 vesicles. So just go, A to 6 is uh, in, enough for this uh, uh, stages. But type 2 collagen is a long, 300 long, long uh, big long molecule that it cannot be accommodated into normal COP2 vesicles. It's a quite a big question, how we can export these long molecules using COP2 vesicle system? Answer came from uh, 2009, Marhotra uh, discovered the important molecule, TANG1. TANG1 is important for the enlargement. So cell, to accommodate type 2 collagen, cell makes a big and enlarged COP2 vesicle to using uh, 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 TANG1. So we measured, uh, we measured uh, various molecule TANG1 and also uh, component of COP2, COP2 vesicle, SEC23 and 24 as the inner core protein and SEC31, SEC13 as the outer core proteins. Then we found that BB27 knockout uh, levels of 23, 24, 13, 31, and TANG1 was uh, significantly decreased. So this showed that BF2S7 regulated transcription was set of gene required for the enlargement of COP2 vesicle. If COP2 vesicle enlarged, uh, type 2 collagen is secreted to cover not called as a seed. However, if uh, COP2 basically not enlarged, uh, ER, a little darker than, than the vacuole, contains con uh, type 2 collagen and swollen. So collagen is not uh, uh, secreted, remain punctate. That makes a phenotype. So take on message is contents of physiological ER cells that differ depends on developmental stages. During smooth alignment, type 8 collagen matters, the corpus is 8 to 6, and vacuolization step, uh, type 2 collagen matters. This corpus is be best to measure it in enlargement of COP2 vesicle, and also it is, uh, helps uh, folding of this collagen molecule. So developmental progression rely on activation of the most appropriate ER sensor. That may be the reason why we have so many sensors. We some depend on some local situation. So local ER sensor probably cope with local uh, ER stress. Jaguar notch signaling is trigger for the differentiation of uh, uh, C cell, but it's not enough. It requires support from UPL. 
Then we saw that you appear to orchestrate biological processes by providing backstage support to main actors. Okay. So finally, I talk, talked about application um, aspect of ER stress research. Chaperone is a protein, so it's very difficult to deliver into the cell. So scientists use small molecule uh, to stabilize folding uh, state, proper folding states as proteins called chemical chaperones. Then this one, uh, the, the addition of this chemical chaperone can decrease, amel ameliorate ERSS. So in this review says that in Europe, this chemical chaperone is used for the treatment of their liver diseases uh, with some sa safety and efficacy. Also, chemical chaperones were shown to ameliorate progression of ALS symptoms. Then last year, this immediately approved as a, a medicine for the treatment of ALS patients in uh, last year in USA and Canada. But those is gram, it's not mistyping, it's gram. Three gram and one gram. The patients must eat like a cookie every day. So better treatment is necessary. Another aspect is uh, cancer. Because cancer uh, must survive under uh, hydro hypoxia and poor nutrition condition at the beginning. So that makes misfolding of proteins. So and they require UPR for the progression. For example, XBPR knockout cells can grow well in the tissue culture, cell culture, but they cannot grow at all in the noodle mice. They cannot survive under stress condition, unlike white type cell uh, injected in two doses. So some, uh, many scientists uh, look for a molecule to inhibit ir mediated splicing reaction to, uh, hold, uh, uh, to develop uh, anti-cancer drugs, which is, some of them are clinical trial too. I hope some, in future, these molecules help cancer patients. Finally, oh, good. I'd like to spend last 10 minutes to talk, tell you my optimistic future plan, very, very optimistic future, but it's a kind of dream. It's a intracellular molecule target therapy. As an example, the rescue of heart failure by constitutively active XBP1. No, unfortunately, I don't have time on the, uh, to talk on ERS versus neurodegenerative disease. Molecule target therapy is amazingly successful. Uh, we just had an exciting talk by Dr. Ferrara uh, using anti VEGF or anti VEGF receptor to treat patient with cancer or eye uh, disease. Another good example is uh, anti PDI one uh, anti PDI one antibody by Honjo Sensei and anti IL six antibody by Kishimoto Sensei. These target molecule outside the cell. These antibody target uh, ligands or receptor on the cell surface. So then it's a, uh, the, uh, uh, treatment of patients were uh, 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 relatively easy. However, our UPR system works intracellularly. It's difficult to deliver antibody efficiently inside the cell. Also, uh, stimulation by uh, stimulation of reaction by chemicals is very difficult. Usually, chemical inhibit reaction, but very difficult to stimulate this splicing reaction. So uh, uh, I, I, I was struggling how how can we can develop this system to the uh, real uh, translation research, but Dr. Carico changed the world. So. Developed memory and technology. So we, we may be able to deliver antibody, uh, not maybe. Now, uh, Dr. Carico deliver antibody mRNA in, uh, into uh, COVID 19 patients uh, to uh, uh, people to raise antibody, 
against COVID-19. Well, these techniques also you, you now using many, many uh, fields, like a, a treatment of cancer or many other diseases. This, may be, uh, this can be a hope in our field. Toward intracellular, intracellular molecule target therapy, we ask three like, basic stages. We asked what will happen if ER stress is burdened persistently and potently from fertilization in Medaka. To this end, we focus on the AXEL. It's an AD, ATP ADP exchanger in the ER membrane. So, uh, knockout of AXEL results in a decrease of ATP in the lumen of the ER. That blocked uh, chaperone activity because chaperone requires ATP. So we can uh, induce ER stress by knocking out of AXER. Indeed, in knock, uh, AXER knockout medaka, we see uh, induction of ER in the entire body from four days post fertilization. Usually, medaka uh, hatched at seven at seven DPF. Then we will also develop the apoptosis. Reporter, we see induction of apoptosis after uh, six, the six DPF. So during four to six, this survival signal. ERS, UPR try to default many things and rescue ERS. So the survival signal is switched to the apoptosis signal during four to six DPF. Then we uh, found that heart. It has a severe phenotype because heart is the first organ to be developed in a vertebrate. We see large pericardial fluid that makes a pressure and uh, uh, blood flow has dramatically decreased in the knockout. And the heartbeat is decreased in uh, knockout. That, due to this heart failure, all uh, Medaka dies by 12 DPFs. Because it, all it, IRM pathway and IHX pathway and the PARC pathways are in, activated in this, the, these target genes. Also, many, many uh, genes are induced by this ER stress. S some of them, shown by red arrow, uh, are shown to malaffect heart function when overexpressed in the literature. Indeed, we injected these mRNA into one cell stage embryo to show, find that uh, this overexpression is malware affects the uh, phenotype of the heart. So induction of these protein is a problem in, in, and then cause heart failures. We ask, we ask them whether we can rescue this phenotype by constitutively activating ATL6 or XBP1. As I mentioned, ATO6 is activated by ERs in this uh, cleavage. So deletion of uh, luminal region and the transmembrane region by genome editing, that can uh, produce constitutively active ATO6 uh, nuclear forms. Or XBP1 is acted by splicing. So by removing, uh, genome editing removal of the a splicing splice intron, we can uh, produce a active XVP on constitutively. Then we made it constitutively uh, it is, uh, activated Medaka and XVP on activated Medaka, made it then, and this uh, induction of the ATS target or XVP on target can rescue of heart failure, made it by decrease of ATP. Results show that. Pericardial uh, fluid is markedly decreased by constitutive expression of XBP1, but not ATL6. Then uh, blood flow is restored and heartbeat was restored by constitutive activation of XBP1. Due to this rescue, Medaka fish could live three days longer. So it's kind of rescue here. So what's the mechanism? This summarize, this review summarizes where ATP is consumed. 
As mentioned, chaperone requires ATP for their function, absolutely. But in the ERAT, ATP dependent ubiquitination and ATP dependent proteosomal degradation occurs outside of the ear in a cytosol. Process in the ERAD in the ERAD lumen do not require ATP. Then I checked, uh, uh, we also did a interest in the difference between ATO6 and XEVPN because ATO6 activated uh, uh, by proteins of pre existing protein. So that can be occur far, very fast. Uh, but it, in the case of XVPN, mRNA must be spliced and then translated. We see activation of ATX first and then followed by activation of XT6. Also, XVPN has broader target than ATX6. Here, XVPN can both, both bind to both elements. Then we propose that chaperone is induced by both ATO6 and XVPN, but ERAD component is induced by uh, XVPN, not ATO6. Indeed, uh, I, uh, this is the uh, degradation date of misfold protein, NHK. Degradation is blocked in a IPR stream IR1 sensor knockout cell. And the introduction of IR1 accelerated uh, degradation of NHK. Then with the, the quantitative uh, uh, RT-PCR to find that ATF6 induced chaperones. However, XBP1 induced the various components of ERA. So induction of ERAD components can degrade uh, proteins misfold in the ER, then, I mean, uh, decrease ER. Indeed, the induction of this chaperone uh, target proteins were uh, de de decreased by XBPN activation, but not ATS activation. This shows that how much is rescued, how much decrease was observed. Then the induction of many genes was nicely decreased by activation of XBP1, but not ATOS. This uh, explains XBP1 mediated rescue. This is the final last slide, good, uh, good time. Uh, we, we could uh, rescue this heart of area by activating XBP1, by inducing ERAD component to degrade misfold protein accumulated in the ear. So maybe my optimistic plan is that this uh, disease associated blood flow, flow is decreased. That probably 80 or, or it's caused decrease of ATP, probably entire, not only ER, but entirely. But uh, chaperone activity is decreased that uh, induce ER stress. So if we, we exhibit M, by M, deliver XVPN mRNA to uh, express active form of XVPN by mRNA technology, we may be able to rescue these uh, diseases. But I know this is too optimistic feature. There are many, many hurdles beyond there, but we kept on uh, working on this, uh, with this strategy. Uh, I believe that the real understanding of ERSS will develop new therapies. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Mori. So we would now like to begin the Q&A session. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Dr. Okana, please. Yeah, thank you very much, and congratulations for a series of beautiful work, and so I'm very <laughs> impressed. Okay, so actually I'm very impressed with the evolution of the uh, you know, EPR response. And so, uh, successful point, your series of work, you started from East Genetics, okay? yes. like in uh, Yoshinori Osumi. Yes, <laughs> yes. at the almost same time. Oh, okay, yeah, he's also successful in uh, identifying autophagy. So, so in East, you, have, you did so East hybrid screening and so identify and you know, UPRE 
binding protein, HAP1. Oh, yeah. It's a completely you know, palindromic. So HAP1 protein homodimer should bind it. Yes. And but so uh, in the uh, membrane or vertebrate, it's more complex. And so you also add an another cis element. And so that is ERSE. And so it's a CCAT N9 CC. Yes, it's a non non -pan palindromic. Yeah. And the spacer of the DNA nucleotide is a nine bases. That means that the same same orient okay, same face of the DNA would be bind okay, two different transcription factors will bind the upstream to induce those okay, responses. So that's why so so such a uh, uh, prayer becomes so complicated. Yeah. So then why so mammalian species acquire such a complex system? And but so more simple ones are easy to treat even the diseases. How, then how to how do you manage the more complex one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your question. So ERC has a bipartite structure. Yes. CCAT was bound to general transcription factor NFY. Mm -hmm. And then this is short, short non palindromic sequence. So to bind to uh, whole bind whole it is to bind or XBP and to bind to this sequence, mm -hmm. they need NFY. The, 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 uh, this is too short to bind uh, binding whole sole it is only or XBP and it is six needs NFY mm -hmm. shoulder to bind to this uh, CCACD. That that that's one one thing. Then uh, during evolution, so so this we don't know. We we still wanted to know why this switch occurs because this uh, I I really, until no in, in the non vertebrate I really, do I really, the park can explain all of the system, but. Somehow, probably, it, uh, mammalian uh, vertebrate system needs quicker activation of ER chapel. As mentioned, it is activation it exists faster than activation of XBP1 because it just cleavage pre-existing protein. So, probably, ER cells occurs so often in the vertebral system, like during notable oh, development, they require faster uh, adjustment of ER chaperone. That probably uh, not XVPN mediated induction is not uh, quick enough. Mm -hmm. And probably some, there might, must be some difficulties in the treatment. We wanted to do this kind of experiment, but what happened if uh, XVPN 86 is uh, activate in, in an exhibition like manner, surprise me, they, they can rescue or not, we, we may be able to answer, get the answer. Mm -hmm. And second one is uh, just a naive question. So there are also proteins so that has so-called low complexity domain or naturally denaturated domain, such as uh, TDP43. So, and, but in, in some occasions, they become so much aggregation to yeah. go there. You know, neurodegenerative disorders. So, what happens? Okay, the okay, UPR re response for those these kind of uh, you know the proteins. Yeah. Yes. Uh, UPR handles only the event in the year. They is in the, but TDP forty or some other uh, this aggregate aggregation from proteins make aggregates in the cytosol. That cannot be handled by UPR. The cytosol has another protective proteostase mechanism called heat shock response. The cytosolic heat shock protein handles uh, 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 aggregates. The people trying to decrease aggregate by activating a cytosolic system. So we, that's why uh, many. I think we are now working on the ERC versus neurodegenerative disease. The most, most cases, the literature is a controversial. We see ERC in our, uh, patients, uh, the patients, the organ, the tissue of dead pa patients, then uh, uh, increase of the ERC marker, but people are not, uh, some people are not convinced. It's a mistake, maybe, uh, 
mistaken of the dead samples. Uh, so we start uh, work, working on, so this, we also work on neural generative disease, but we want to start from ER. ER uh, misfold the protein, aggregate protein in the ER. That cause some, some cause um, disease. It's a very rare diseases, but we work on this one. Then expand our finding to the uh, next uh, disease like ARS. In some in some patients with ARS uh, disease having a mutation SOD superoxide dismutase, ERS occurs in the iPS cell derived from the SOD patient. Then we want to know what what is happening, why ERCs cause. Then we, we if we may um, can decrease ERCs in a, such a patient, we may be able to uh, mitigate ERCs in the other patient. Maybe uh, in Alzheimer, Parkinson, some ERCs occurs. Then we can rescue at least ER part of, of the symptoms. Then a uh, little bit better uh, situation. Please. Hello, <laughs> I'm Yoshiko Takahashi, Kyoto, Kyoto University. Actually, I have been meeting you very often in our department because we're colleagues, but every time we meet, it's just for faculty meeting and work committee meetings. And, and it, today it is so nice that I could see the, the well-summarized story of your fantastic work. Thank you very much and congratulations. And uh, my question is, I'm a developmental biologist. I'm very much a, a curious about, about differential expression or signals of, uh, I don't remember, five different molecules of ATF6-like molecules. Yeah. And some signal is, one signal is strong in, in the bone or the uh, another is in the notochord, and the, but so my question is: Is there any tissues, the, the, the developing tissues, that do not care? They don't that do not undergo ER stress, or is there any cells which are not at all stressed? I, I I'm yeah. if if there are, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm envious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good example here. Uh, yeah. Pancreatic alpha cell, beat alpha cells. This is a whole knockout, whole knockout of the park. In the pancreas, beta cell undergo apoptosis, but alpha cell relatively okay. So they're they, they making glu glucagon. So uh -huh. we, uh -huh. we, we wanted to know, we wanted to know why alpha cells are so resistant to ER3, mm -hmm. and we asked my student to do uh, no queen uh, uh, transient expression of glucagon or uh, insulin mm -hmm. matters or uh, level of the amount of protein level of glucagon amount is lower than the level of insulin or the couple of uh, question but we have no answer. That I see, uh, at least cells are not synthesizing large amount of proteins, probably relatively okay to, since, since not resistant to ERS. The, as I mentioned, organs secreting and synthesizing large amount of proteins suffer from uh, no, no UPR signaling. So, no, no, no protein, not cells do not Synthesize protein are resistant to ERS. The some somehow some cell type are resistant alpha uh, paric alpha cell. Like uh, some difference exists. Okay, so it's a, it's a story. Something to do with the the amount of desynthesized protein. If they produce a bunch of protein, they should be rigid. Uh, I mean the the resistant. Against the distress, but the like um, fibroblastic cells, in, uh, which are pretty much uh, I don't know, calm and they <laughs> not very much working the big stuff, and they 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 don't care about 
your source. Oh, that, that's very nice, very so, nice. So you, I think you. UPR care the amount of misfold protein, mm. but EDAT, it can, uh, in the, we had the introduction in the mo uh, earlier that EDAT, is ER so degradation can uh, degrade misfold protein. The EDAT care the qu qu quality, not quantity. Oh, okay. Uh, I think we have di two different systems to cope with misfold proteins. Thank you very much. Please, Dr. Doc, really, really appreciate. I have a question for you actually regarding, you know, uh, as I was um, uh, talking at lunchtime, we stumble in some glycosylation inhibitor which are uh, involved, you know, in the stress path. But we, you know, um, we found a phenotype, you know, but this glycosylation inhibitor look like Mike, much like the Perkin knockout. And we realized that the Perkin knockout, that there is a, a mice are very small actually, uh, in, uh, and, and, and actually, it turned out to be that there's a small size is due to lack of IGF-1. And then the question, actually, I, did, I had a discussion with the investigator that initially developed this knockout. Now, I don't recall his name. He's semi-retired. But it was making the point it could be the some of the effect of PERC and, and related you know, to the ER stress. They are purely physiological effect. And this looks like one. You, if you like a critical armor, then the, 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 the tissue does not grow, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any thoughts about this? Mm -hmm. What's the question again? Okay. Is there any effect, for example, of this molecule, uh, which are unrelated you know, to the ER stress? They are purely, they, we call physiological effect. Like, for example, the PERC knockout result in very small mice. But this is a small size. It does not seem to be related you know, to anything other than very low level of uh, the hormone IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor. So do you think that there is this possibility, some of this uh, important effect, you know, in some case, you know, they're not related you know, to ER stress but, uh, due to some... But uh, IGF, IGF is not... IGF goes through the ER. Yeah. There's some, some hormone go along, uh, aside, aside of the ER, but IGF, if IGF goes through the ER, it, 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 uh, synthesis of ER, IGF cause ER stress. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that makes... No, that, that's a, that's a certainly is a possibility. But actually, this uh, uh, the, the scientist who developed this knockout to hypothesize that this is not, you know, ER stress effect. You know, the phenotype may be due to other effect. But I think that's I think it's a very provocative story. It's a very interesting story. Yeah, some, some we I, I'm a, like a classical cell biologist. The protein is go through the ER, get go to the ER, get folded and secrete. But some some uh, Many proteins are not shown to be go, go shown, shown not go to the ear, go directly to the uh, cell surface. Yeah. Uh, so that, in that case, no, you know, ear stress occurs. I, I don't know how, how these two systems are discriminated. Why some protein can uh, most of protein go to the ear, but not some. Other do not go to the ER. I don't. I don't know the uh, difference. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, we have reached the end of the Q and A session. Thank you very much for your question, and thank you very much, Dr. Mori. <laughs> the laureate and the partners will now leave the venue. Please give them a warm round of applause.